first of all, thank you for being here and for sharing a couple of minutes with us. Um, I just want to present the spectrum of products that Huawei has made available for the market. Um, basically, there are two families of products. Uh, on one side, the residential uh, solutions, which is called Fusion Home. And then on the other side, larger scale uh, solutions, which are called Fusion Solar. So we will start with Fusion Home quickly. Fusion Home is based on a highly integrated device, uh, which integrates the inverter function and also uh, a battery connection function. So in this sense, uh, it's not only a solar inverter, it can, only work, it can also work together, in this case with LG CAM batteries, so that you have an additional storage device where you can store your excess of energy for later use. Uh, together with this, there is a safety box which communicates with optimizers, which are at the module level. Here you can see optimizers. Um, <coughs> these optimizers are designed so that they can um, make optimum use of the yield of modules which are in partial shadows or which are completely in the shade on some uh, moments of the day. Uh, for instance, uh, when you have a typical uh, rooftop system on your house, maybe you have a tree nearby or a chimney with, which at certain times of the day casts a shadow on uh, some of the modules. So on these specific modules you would choose to install an optimizer in order that they don't um, reduce the yield of the whole string. Uh, some other manufacturers require the optimizers to be installed at all modules. Huawei does not require this. It's optional. You can, but you don't have to. The inverter itself is absolutely quiet. It has no fans, so uh, it's all by passive ventilation, which is quite robust as a solution. And it's also IP65, so you can install it either in your house or outside. Uh, it has two string connectors. Each of the strings has an independent MPP controller which is also great. For example, if we think about um, a typical rooftop, which sometimes is not uh, south-oriented, which sometimes is two different angles, one looking to the west, the other one looking to the east, so you have an independent maximum power point uh, controller and, and, uh, and tracker for each rooftop. Yeah. Um, the AC connector is a quick installation connector which has been developed with Phoenix Contact. It requires no screwdrivers. It's a very robust thing and it latches in place with a special latch the next click and you know that it's robustly fixed. This is very important because a loose connector over time uh, could lead to arc formation inside of the plug and this can create big problems. So this is basically the solution. This communicates over Wi-Fi with an app which has been specifically developed for this. Uh, with the app, the installer can make all the configuration of the system and the house owner can see the yields, can program how the system should behave with regards to excess energy and storage and everything else. Uh, it also communicates with a cloud server. Uh, if the house has a router, it, it is programmed, it's configured and it can uh, communicate with a cloud server so that the house owner and also the installer can monitor the yields of the plant uh, with an additional app over the cloud or with a web interface. Okay. So it's a great product, it's a great product. Um, it has in common, um, the, whole, the whole Huawei families, they have a, a number of things in common. One of the things is we don't have any fuses on the DC side. They are not required because we have a maximum power point tracker per string. So you don't, you don't have any potential currents flowing uh, from one string to another. The other thing is easy deployment. <coughs> this is the lightest device in the residential category in the whole market. You only need one person to install it, it's 11 kilogram. So everybody can lift 11 kilogram and put them in place. The other, th the other thing is the passive cooling system because Huawei understands that this is more robust and uh, prevents uh, uh, operation and maintenance costs in the future. Uh, fans have the tendency either to have ice formation in the winter when they are outside or to get dusty and then they don't move uh, as well as they should. So this is an absolute passive component. It's more expensive than a fan, but on the other side, it's more robust in the outside in any case. And in the inside, it's silent. You don't hear it. 
if we go to the three-phase family, which is the fusion solar family, we have uh, typically <coughs> two types of devices. <coughs> Sorry. One family is with a display, which are for the smaller power um, uh, ranges, which is 8, 12, 17 and 20 KTL models. Uh, they also have passive ventilation. This is common among all Huawei inverters. They also have a maximum of two strings per maximum power point tracker. So in this way, still we are uh, at the philosophy of not having to use any DC fuses. This obsession with the DC fuses comes not because they are expensive. The DC fuses maybe three dollars to five dollars, depending on the on the manufacturer. But the point is, when after a number of years uh, the fuses they have an aging process, and in southern Europe where it's a uh, warm climate, it, it's quite accelerated. Or in India, for example. And so after two years, three years, they start having failures, and uh, it is a high cost if you have to send somebody out on a rooftop on a PV plant uh, and somebody who has to drive for one and one and a half hours somewhere just to change a five dollar fuse yeah, it's not it's not the cost of the fuse it's the cost of the manpower and it's the cost of the time and it's it's the annoyance of having strings which are not working so because of this Huawei decided to make the topologies uh, based on uh, maximum two strings per maximum power point tracker in this way they can make sure you never will need a fuse and all these problems are out of the way um, the other family doesn't have a display, it communicates directly with an app, so the installer can configure it with a mobile phone directly, either by connecting over the USB or with Bluetooth. And they also share this uh, quality of having passive cooling, so nothing can go wrong there, and also having two strings per MPP. These are 60 KTL and by the end of the year 100 KTL will be coming. So these are uh, thought of uh, for larger PV plants, for typically multi-megawatt scale. Uh, they, of course, they can also be used in smaller plants. For this, uh, there are two models, um, or sub-models, I would say. Uh, one of them is designed for 1,000 volt uh, DC PV modules and has an output of 400 volt AC, which is standard in Europe. Um, but then there is another module, uh, another type, which has been designed for 1,500 volt PV modules and with 800 volt AC output. And this is more uh, for large scale PV plants, say 10 megawatts and above, for example. So here you want to save uh, cable costs and you want to save uh, energy losses. Uh, and this is why the higher voltages are probably better for larger scale uh, plants. So. Um, Nice about this new family is <coughs> you also have the AC side uh, separated from the DC side. In previous models we had a quite robust AC connector, which is going in here. But here, uh, as we are using higher uh, power levels, we need larger cross sections of cables. So uh, if anybody of you has been operating with a large cable, let's say um, 70, 80, 90 square millimeters, it's a quite robust thing. So Huawei decided to make the connectors on, on the upper side instead of the lower side so that you can lead in the cable and still have room to fit it in place. And this is quite interesting. It's, it's a simple thing, but uh, many installers don't like scratching their hands because the connectors are at the, at the bottom side and they don't find the right angle to put in the cable. And this is an annoyance which also leads to uh, a certain level of frustration and uh, I think you will like the device if you're an installer and you see that you can comfortably put everything in, in place. Um, at the same time, we are separating the AC part from the DC part quite clearly. Uh, DC part, you can see all the string connectors at the bottom. And here we have another highlight, which are the DC switches. These are hand-operated switches, and you have two of them which is an advantage in case of uh, having to make any maintenance on the modules. So you don't have to disconnect the inverter, you only disconnect half of it and you make your maintenance or whatever and then the, the, the remaining 50% are still working. So, this was a quick overview. Uh, if you have any questions.
thank you for a nice presentation. <laughs> uh, as you said, we don't need fuse in the DC side, in these inverters. Uh, uh, and uh, in case of the lightning, lightning strike in the DC side, do you have a surge protecting device, SPD, or how does it protect the whole system? Yes, in fact, uh, fuses will not, uh, will not protect your device from lightning. Uh, they are too slow. Uh, this is why Huawei, on both sides, on AC side and DC side, they have um, surge protection arrestors uh, type 2. So, on, on both, on AC and, and on DC. Yeah. Even in the home unit? Even in the home unit. If you take the data sheets, you will see them. Uh, they are represented in the schematics. You can see them. It's always on both sides. Uh, uh, type 2 on DC and on AC side. So you're coming from Nepal, there you have, uh, I can understand your worries. <laughs> uh, are these inverters all IEC certified already? IEC? Yes. Interesting. These inverters are absolutely IEC certified, yes. I have some colleague from, from us here somewhere, he's from Nepal, he can tell you. <laughs> Hi, two questions. The, uh, three-phase uh, fusion home, is it released for the European market or not? And the second question uh, with regards to the optimizers, the litigation between Solar Edge and Huawei, is it impacting your rollout of the optimizers worldwide or is it still business as usual? Okay, uh, second question first, I have no clue about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not following this, uh, sorry. But um, to the fusion home, to the three-phase, uh, it will be coming to Europe later this year. It's uh, scheduled for the end of the year. Yeah? So no, right now it's not available, very clearly. Yeah. Regarding SolarEdge, I guess SolarEdge is looking more on this than myself. In this, in this. And I'm talking for myself now. Yeah. Uh, are you still selling the optimizers? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. How about energy management uh, software? Do you, do you have your own energy management software, or you just you talk to us about inverters and but the user side or? Okay, energy management is a quite wide term. Uh, let me narrow it a little bit. There are additional hardware and software uh, designed and implemented by Huawei, which can help you to manage the energy of your plant. But there are specific functions for that. So. On one side, you have uh, plant monitoring, which is there. There is uh, the same thing as with the Fusion Home, uh, of course, I didn't mention it, but there is also the same cloud server or a different cloud server with the same platform. Uh, there is a, a cloud server which will communicate with uh, so-called smart loggers, which are the devices which gather up all the information from the inverters at a, at a plant. So uh, there is also an app similar to the one uh, you have for uh, Fusion uh, Home where you can see what your plant is doing everywhere in the world, no problem. That's what cloud servers are for. Yes, exactly. So I'm, yeah, monitoring is a part of controlling. So now, um, now it's open. There are third party providers which use this information to make plant control, to make whatever, blockchain or whatever. There is an open interface for that. There's an, an, an application program interface for that, um, which uh, of course, with a non-disclosure agreement, you can have the information on that. And uh, third-party providers have already implemented solutions for park control, so PV park control, which is uh, typically requ following requirements by the grid operator or utility company uh, in, in, form form, uh, in the form of uh, controlling the active power uh, versus the grid voltage at the injection point, things like that. So. There are a number of providers. In Germany, you will find many. Yeah. Uh, this is not the core business of Huawei at this moment. The core business of Huawei, because... Yeah, well, uh, you, have the, you have the smart logger, which can do some control, uh, some basic control, which is... Uh, in, in Germany, it's called the Rundsteuerempfänger. Uh, it's the, 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 the broadcasting system that Germany has um, and that the utility companies use in order to tell the PV plants you can now produce 100% of your maximum possible power output or you have to limit to 70% or you have to limit to 30% or you have to limit to 0%. This kind of control which is very specific uh, can be done with a smart logger. 
it has digital inputs where you can give some instructions. It also has a, a TCP interface where you can, over Modbus TCP, give instructions to control the inverters. So, but as I said, uh, energy management is a very broad term. Uh, we can now be talking for hours and hours about all the specific things that are or those that are not. In any case, I think that the, the important message right now is uh, either by Huawei or third parties, all is possible and most of it is already implemented. And I say most of it because I now can't think of anything that is not, but I don't know everything in the world. So. <laughs> You're warmly welcome. Look around, take information, take your data sheets, whatever, or just call me, ask me. I'm around. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.